possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello and welcome to the RTE GA podcast. Mikey Stafford here. We are on the verge of the uh, of a very different Allianz Football League. So um, we're going to stick mainly to the big ball code today. So I'm delighted to say I'm by Kevin. Kevin McStay, uh, the Wexford Senior Football Manager, Shane Roach, and by Damian Lawler. How are you all doing, lads? Hello, Mikey. Good, Mikey. Yeah. Uh, delighted, delighted to have you all here, especially you, Damian. I used to record the podcast on a Thursday, but that's Damian's supposed day off, so he can never join me. So I've just moved the whole podcast to a Wednesday just so we can get Damian. <laughs> I like this. the word supposed is the accurate word there, Mikey. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we like to get our money's worth out of you, Damian. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sh- Shane, I might come to you first, seeing as you're, 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 you're the man in the field, literally, these days. Um, how has the, you know, you, it's it's a four-week countdown to the Allianz Football League, uh, League, a week longer than the hurlers at least, but a hell of a lot shorter term than an inter-county manager would be used to, unless it's his first season as an inter-county manager, in which case you don't know what you should be used to, so maybe it's a blessing to be in your first year in charge. Yeah, ignorance is bliss. Um, yeah, four weeks, four weeks of a running, it's, uh, I suppose the key to the whole thing is, Talking to the SNC about load and 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 session planning and management of the players and obviously key to to stay to get the work done, but obviously to stay as injury free as possible. Yeah. Um, how has it been for you? Because you you know obviously you kind of took over on short notice last year in unusual circumstances when when Paul Galvin kind of c- couldn't commit to the travel etc. And then. Uh, short, short finish to the league and then a very short championship you know going, going out to Wicklow um, it's it must be kind of you haven't had a normal introduction to inter-county management it's fair to say no I, I, I most certainly haven't but the only thing about it is at least uh, this has been run off in, in, in glorious sunshine down here in Wexford compared to what we were exposed to last year in the interim period of of two days against Wicklow and complete washout so uh it's great. Look, it's not ideal, as we say, but in, we're just delighted to be getting back out there on the pitch. Um, we're, we're training in Ferns and it's absolutely glorious up there. Uh, and uh, we're the only team up there um, on any given night. The hurlers go the opposite nights and we have as many pitches as we need and we can just get out, move the ball and, and, and prepare for whatever comes down the line. Yeah, as a, a Wexford man living in Wicklow, these are glorious times for me. I just keep getting, you know, kind of uh, derby matches where I supposedly can't lose, even though I really don't care whether Wicklow win or lose a game of GA. Yet I'm not here long enough, but um, it's a little bit of a quirk, really, isn't it? To, to you know, you'll have your league matches, but in two championships, the only team you have faced is Wicklow. Fingers crossed, you beat them and get a get a run at the dubs, isn't it? So you know, it gets easier and easier. Yeah, yeah, no, um, we won't be looking uh, any further than Wicklow. Uh, they're, they're, we've played them. Uh, I've played Davy Burke and Wicklow twice now in the in the interim period, and they're two and zero. So it's something hopefully that we can we can maybe rectify and and get a win, and then look go on from there. But up in Ockram is not going to be easy, and uh, at the minute they have the, they really have the Indian sign over us. Yeah. Any challenge matches, Shane? Did you did you manage to squeeze one in in the week and a half? <laughs> we we had we had a plan for a plan for a plan, and we had, we were due to play uh, two teams uh, early last week, but obviously the we had cancelled them due to the government guidelines. And then obviously when they released them on Wednesday to say that we're allowed, uh, they were obviously cancelled at that time, and we're to ha- due to have a game this Saturday. Uh, but that's been pulled as well. The, the team were to play. Um, had an in-house game last week and picked up a number of knocks and probably for us as well looking at our squad uh, and and like hamstring strains it's you know it's nearly too risky um if you go off and you picked up another two or three strains um six days away from your first game a tough game against against waterford it, it could uh, could put us back a, a bit but um it's 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 the tightness of the calendar that's the key. Like a, a normal hamstring strain, you probably wouldn't bat an eyelid in the normal calendar, but uh, two weeks is is a, is a long time in in this window. Oh, absolutely, um, Damien. The the one of the 
the challenge matches thing is obviously you reported on this last week there, how quickly that 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 was changed. You know, it, the, the GA are kind of flying by the seat of their pants a little bit here with government regulations and stuff. And kind of the, the, the kind of uniqueness of this league is kind of shown up by the division that Shane and Wexford find themselves in, Division 4 South, which is a three three team yeah. league with um with Waterford and Carlo. I said here a couple of weeks ago, wouldn't it be? This is the perfect opportunity to get the Kilkenny footballers back on stream, at least just give them a few <laughs> a few games. But, um, you know, it, it is kind of, it's unfair to say it's the back of a fag box kind of situation, but it is kind of just a means to an end with Geezer said it. He had a great line today on the, on the website saying that uh, Division 1 North of the... Uh, of the Allianz Football League is looking a little bit incestuous. Um, <laughs> so it's all it's all a little different, isn't it? Yeah, like I mean, it is a little different. I mean, the the, the Division One North, like Easter talks about, is just like a mini Ulster Derby rivalry kind of a thing. But going back to the challenge matches, there, Camogie Association announced yesterday their split season model, and I heard of about um. 20 challenge matches that were coming online straight away. So I think counties were, were ready. And a bit like Shane there, I've been, I've been dealing with inter-county managers uh, at senior under 17 and under 20 for the past year, Mikey. Um, and they're all just craving one thing, and that's information. And information, because of the changing circumstances with public health, uh, the information has been all over the place. It either hasn't arrived or it's evolving the whole time or changing the whole time. And I think, um, uh, you know, even last week, when the roadmap was out there, I thought we were over the hump in terms of work. And then, all, you know, all these regulations, I was talking to the government uh, department sport uh, press advisor, and uh, he told me he made a tent was the day for challenge matches. A few hours later, then we, we got a, the inter-county managers have a WhatsApp group and, and um, you know, Shane probably beyond that. And it, one of the managers put in, we're good to go from tonight from challenge matches. And uh, they're all checking. Then a lot of them were checking with me. Was that the case? And, I said, the, the most recent information I have is from the government. That's made a tent. But within 10 minutes, we got a, a you know confirmation from the GEA that challenge matches could go ahead that night. So that's how quickly the situation changed, Mikey. But it's been like that. It's been like that for months now. Um, you'd either have no movement at all or three movements in one day. And it's been very, very hard to keep up with it. From Shane's perspective, the like, obviously London aren't been able to play this one. And Michael Maher is very disappointed over that. But you have to, I suppose, think it's practical that they're not involved. But yeah, I think from Shane's perspective, I would imagine, Shane, without putting words in your mouth, just games is all you want to see who you have and try out maybe a few of the under-20 players because I was with Tip under-20s a few years ago. We played Wexford in a couple of challenge matches and particularly with the Wexford forwards of that time, I felt there some right good footballers coming through. So um, I'd imagine you just want to see them out in games and see how to perform under pressure. Uh, because really and truly challenge matches will bring you up to the tempo of the league. But um, yeah, it's just all a bit different. And I hope we don't have to go through this again, to be fair. Yeah. How about that, Shane? It, it is, it's, it must be disappointing because for a Division 4 team, you know, the league is, is not to say it's your be all and end all, but it's your best chance of competitive matches, a, a run of them. And, um, you know, best chance of, you know, promotion would be probably the aim for a Wexford football manager at the moment. Realistically, you're not going to win a Leinster championship. So um, to have only two games, to have a bye week in the first week, it, it, it is a shame, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. And again, and, um, Damien's right. Uh, we have a kind of a nice blend of, of youth uh, coming through and we, we work closely with David Murphy, who's the, the under 20 manager. And he would... Uh, we'd, we'd call him for some players to come in for in-house games um, as well. And, you know, just to, to get games into this youthful panel would be the key to see where we're at. Uh, and obviously this week, we're the only team in the country that has a bye week. So I've been kind of contacting some of the stronger counties with a larger panel that may have, you know, 15, 18 players in an extended panel would they be in a position to play. But obviously they've picked up up some niggles as well and obviously their panels have got a little bit tighter so uh, both the game two games that I was hoping for this week um, have fought, both fallen through so we're just going to have to go at it again ourselves in Wexford Park in an in-house game and um, and then obviously like face into Waterford who've had we'll have a very competitive game against Carlo the, the following Saturday probably unknown and untested but uh it's, it, that's the, that's the fear. It's the complete unknown of 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 obviously our starting team and our our, our subs and uh, our our extended panel and, and who's going to be involved. Yeah, 
Kevin listen to this I'd say you're fairly glad you've uh, jumped off the inter-county management merry-go-round for a year or two and have gone into punditry huh yeah, it's, it's a bit more straightforward the old punditry all right <laughs> the uh, it's it's interesting isn't it that um, our best competition by a mile which is the leagues for all the reasons we know and especially the one that you've just mentioned there Mikey that Shane's best opportunity uh, would normally be in the league um uh, and here we are with a league like no other now, where essentially uh, you have four games, um, the the three regular ones, and then the playoff one, whichever whichever whether you're going up or you're going down. Um, and how do you how do you how do you approach that now? No matter what division you're in, do you use it as warm up games for the championship for your Wicklow match, for instance, Shane? Um, or do you say, hmm, no, I have to position myself properly for next year because, as you know, in August, we're going to debate a new championship. Um, now, the good news is the 2022 league will decide your seedings for, the, for this new championship, whichever way it goes. Uh, and that's important to note. But this year is still critically important. You don't want to be falling down a division before a new championship is voted on in August. So it's... Um, it's a balancing act. It's a balancing act. Um, and I saw one very peculiar. Uh, I came across it online, and I'll share this with you. I thought this was crazy, that we have a league um, for which one team, and I think it's Dutty Gall, cannot win it. Did you notice that? Um, no. Because they're playing the, pre- the prelim against a team that's not in their division. Okay. As in down. Yeah. I, I didn't dream this up. <laughs> I mean, I, I just bumped upon it. Now, how about a league that you can't win? There, there's a fair one. Um, uh, and, and I think it's correct. I was racking my brain to see had this guy, had he had he stumbled upon something. I think he has. I think he's correct. Uh, Damien, you might know a bit more about it than me, but um, mm. I think on, on the surface, it looks like it is correct. So it's the weirdest of, of leagues, even though we're just thrilled I got down to watch Mayo against Down for, for GA Go on Saturday. We're just thrilled to get in the car, get out, cross the county boundary and get off and watch a football match. But it is a weird league. It's so short and truncated. And then it really re- leads right into the championship. Mm-hmm. Um, so I go back to my original point. Are these really good challenge matches? Or is there something at stake here? Um, okay. No, oh, sorry. I just Shane. What, what what would be the Wexford answer to that question? Oh, like for us, you know, it's 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 pretty obvious that the league is, is key, and we aim over the the next number of years to be playing at a higher brand of football uh, for our for the the guys that are coming up through the the squad, and like that is the league is the key. And obviously, last year we beat Limerick away to put ourselves in uh, right opportunity to uh, to. To get up to division three but Wicklow beat us on the last day so that was very disappointing so realistically for us we are just um really looking forward to next saturday against against waterford then carlo hopefully putting ourselves in the league semi-final uh, and then taking it from there but like we know obviously with with, with waterford last year we we, they, we beat them by a point and carlo over the last number of years have been have been very strong and they've played division three football so it's going to be very, very competitive, and obviously, local derby. There'll be no love lost between a lot of us, so it'll be. It's very exciting, and you know, it's an awful pity. Obviously, crowds in, in Wexford Park. There might be that many want to get into it, but at least it mm. would be, create a, a nice uh, local atmosphere. Mm. Uh, Damien, is, is it amplifying kind of the the kind of traditional, maybe lazy logic of the league on a normal year that Division Two, Three, and Four? It matters a hell of a lot, possibly more than championship. And but Division One, maybe it is a little bit more like what we consider the hurling league to be, like a, a tune-up for the championship. Is it the same this year, or do you think the the quirks of the the shorter run-ins, etc., make it a little bit different? Yeah, look at it. it's an interesting point, Mikey, because um, Mickey Hart a few years ago maintained that to be real All Ireland contenders, you had to be in Division One, and I think that you know Shane is on the ball there. Like uh, in terms of real progress for Wexford, in, in my opinion, would be going up through the leagues, and if you can tie in a good championship run or a good qualifier run there along the way over a couple of seasons, that's brilliant as well. But real progress is is going up through the leagues, and I know from a Tipperary perspective, getting out of Division uh, Division Three is is a is a big one for Tip this year. Um, I know. 
know they obviously won Munster last year, but uh, real progress will be getting up through the through the divisions. And I think that when the Tolchin Cup does come into play, Mikey, um, you know, do we do we want to be? We we had a taster with the soccer what the the breakaway elite league was going to be perceived, how it was going to be perceived by the public. Um, you know, people argue that the, the tier system is needed in Gaelic football, like it's there in hurling. Um, some people agree with that, others don't. But, you know, the league will determine your placings there. It, you know, are your top two divisions or bottom two? And certainly for any county that, that wants to be seen as top 10, 12 contenders, getting up through the leagues is so important. But, but I have experience of all the leagues as a journalist and I spent 2009, Mikey, with Waterford in Division 4. I wrote a book about it, and I know how hard Division 4 is to get out of, never mind getting into Division 3. Division 4 is a slugfest. I mean, some of the, some of the tightest uh, and most intense tactical battles are, are down there, and you might only win by one game. Any team, London included, on their day is capable of overturning it, and you've had some right big guns down there in recent years. So I think if you're doing... Kevin's right. It's the best competition we have. It's definitely the best for divisions two, three, and four because that gives them a tangible goal. And it's a real benchmark to measure yourself against. Whereas up in division one, I think everything is better resourced, more players, probably, you know, more backing, possibly greater fitness levels and maybe greater ta uh, talent pool as well. And they can look ahead to championship honours, but realistically not, not many outside of that camp. Yeah, Kevin, you've you've experienced it. Obviously, I think you've you've got a bit of experience of probably the top two divisions. Ever ever division yeah. three? Did you ever lower yourself uh, to division? I three? think as a player, I think as a player, I was. I, I can't remember for sure, but you know there was Norths and Souths back yeah. in my time as well. But yeah. I yeah. think so. I might have tipped into division three at some stage with so, Mayo. Um, you, you'd probably agree then with the from a manager's perspective, if you know Mayo, it's an unusual little trip down to Division Two. Like they'd obviously mm. be keen to get back up there. Like the Mickey Hart adage of you know you have to be the yeah, Mayo, Mayo, Mayo might change that adage. Good, <laughs> good, yeah, yeah, yeah but, absolutely. Good. But there, there will obviously the the main aim I think for Division Two teams this year is not to get relegated for the love of God. But yes. then the um, but but obviously getting back up to Division One. So Mayo down Mead, West Mead, you know, is very interesting. And then. Cork, Kildare, Clare, and Leash. You, know, you got two, oh, it's, it's two, two interesting little mini groups there, haven't you? Well, imagine if there were all eight of them together. I mean, mm. <laughs> they were having a full shot at it. And, and I had that experience with Roscommon when Tip, actually, uh, Damien, uh, were a big yeah. threat to us, and Cork, and Clare, um, and me, oh. um, and trying to get out of Division Two, especially when we were kind of just, I won't, I don't like the term yo yo, but when we were top seven eight nine some number like that take your pick um and you're really cracking to get out of division two it's really difficult and then the prize is oh my god you're up in division one and trying to hang on in division one becomes the same um but the the whole idea is to get up up the higher divisions i i, I might slightly disagree with you damien about the role of the talchin cup and getting a kind of a taste of it with the soccer Bear, bear in mind that Super League, you couldn't get into it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you couldn't yeah. get out of it. <laughs> yeah. So um, the the Talchin and the leagues offer offer stepping stones. You know, depending on how good you are. U ultimately, yeah. ultimately, you progress in the GA if you're good enough. And I, I think that's that's one of the great attractions of it. Um, you'll go up the league, Shane's team will go up the league if they're good enough. And if they're losing to Waterford or they're losing to Wicklow, et cetera, well, then they won't be togging. They'll, they'll stay where, you know, that one, the league doesn't lie. Uh, and that tends to be fairly true. Now, it might lie when there's only four teams <laughs> in, the, in the groups this year. But normally, um, when, when there's eight in it, it, it is a great competition. Division two this year looks very tight as well. You know, Mayo on paper look the team plus one. Whoever else is going to go with them, that may not pan out that way because um, uh, it, it's very tricky. And another thing to just throw into the mix is remember four key teams have essentially lost uh, home advantage and are now at most playing one league match at home, if any. I don't know if they're playing any at home, but they've certainly been penalised or sanctioned. Uh, and that, that means if you have two home games out of three, it does improve it. And I know you're going to say there's no crowds at them, but Shane's team is more used to playing in Wexford Park than my team or whatever team I'm in charge of. So they do have that home advantage still. They might not have the crowd part of it. Um, but you have two matches at home now out of your three. It is definitely giving you a leg up. 
Um, and so those four teams, um, who are the Down, Cork, Monaghan and Dublin. Monaghan, so, yes. Yeah, Monaghan. I forgot, forgot Monaghan there for a second. Um, um, they're definitely at a disadvantage, um, in, in my opinion. But the, the big idea uh, with the leagues has always been about progression. Uh, and our leagues were so, so good. You couldn't really use them as a view to the championship unless you were a very established team. You know, say a team that's in the top four. They can blood a few fellas. But generally speaking, the top division two teams and three teams there isn't much room for manoeuvre down there in terms of experimentation. Yeah. Shane, it'd be interesting to get your point, going back to your playing days, you, you've definitely played in Division 3, Division 4. Did you ever play in Division 2? Uh, we did get to, in Division 2 in 2009. Yeah. Now, as we've discussed, there's no questioning the competitiveness of Division 4, but from a player's perspective, what are the what are the noticeable differences when you when you do move up into divisions and like how, how, how that stands to you as a development of a team? Yeah, and like in fairness, Division Four, uh, I think Damien, you just said it. Like it really is. There's going to be very little between everyone. You know, the the Division Four North is Leitrim, Loud, um, Antrim, and uh, and Sligo, Sligo. You know, which will be but, but like Sligo and Antrim beat us last year, and then Leitrim and Loud are both down from Division Three, uh, and then obviously we beat uh, Waterford last year by a pint. And I think we beat Carlo at home by four, but they're going to have home advantage there as well. So like, it's going to be very little. And it's really uh, the teams that, the teams that have got out of it over the last number of years have been the ones that uh, obviously there was a couple of times where there was, it was teams that were relegated from division three that were very, very strong. Like the Derry's got out, got out quite easily. I think Ross Common a number of years got out very easy as well, but it really is going to come down to those the moments of a, a one point win yeah, either way and, and uh, with, with Division 3 it really then is going to be what we would say the uh, the, the real uh, structure of a team and the coaching is going to be the key but Division 4 is going to be all about like intensity and the yeah. team that's really wanting to get out of this division the most if you don't fancy this division and you're kind of thinking your football gets you out of it that's you're going to be in it for another year like where mm-hmm. Division Three, like it really is going to be a good bit more football based, but down in Division Four, it really is a war zone. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that's, that, that's kind of the impression you get, all right. That it's um, there's uh, fur and feathers and all sorts flying, and it's um, as you say, they, they tend to be. You don't get too many blowouts. Obviously, there's quite there's quite a it's quite level there, and you you tend to get kind of one point two point games a lot of the time. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of comebacks in the second half last year, from what I remember, especially in the last two games, there was uh, there was a lot of drama down there, and you get to watch it on GA Go now as well, of course. Ke- so Ke- uh, Kevin is right, um, like about home advantage. We're at home to Waterford, so realistically, like we would just tell the guys eat at home and come in an hour and a half before throwing. But then we've yeah. an hour up the road to Carlo, pre-match meal. Is it carried in? You know, the catering company. Where do we set up? Like all those little things that normally would be just stop an hotel here there you know it, it can make a massive massive difference for so for the teams that have lost home advantage and mm-hmm. um, you know they're going to be at a, a massive disadvantage yeah and what are you doing there Shane do you know yet do you, have you got answers to that it, oh, yeah we, we, we what we did last year against Limerick is we stopped in tip uh, and and we we brought it, our catering company had sent off a pack of salad of salad food with us that yeah, that we ate on on um, just outside uh, Tip Town, and then we drove on down down to uh, the Centre of Excellence down Limerick. So we probably do. Jesus, Shane, similar. you wouldn't even throw a few bob into the tip economy when you're down there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we st- I tell you, we st- on the on the way down, we stopped for enough coffees anyway, and on the way home, so yeah, we we'll keep you afloat. <laughs> there was a Very time good. you st- there was a time you stopped for pints <laughs> on the way home from these national league matches. <laughs> I tell you, uh, we, we beat Limerick last year, and on the way home, Adair was was looking quite. It was Adair <laughs> on a Sunday, a sunny Sunday evening. I was looking like we could all just stop there now and uh, mm. on the way home on the Monday. Of course, the summer league as well, lads. We forgot to mention that, or, or, or yeah. maybe it was mentioned, but it is also a summer league, so uh, the weather should be mm. should be a lot better. Yeah, well, Shane mentioned their two games against Wicklow last year were played in the most horrendous of autumn slash winter weather you could imagine. So, yeah, that will be a change at least. Um, We'll move on to what has got uh, hurling folk exercise this week, Damien, is the the new advantage rule, which kind of flew under the radar a little bit, I think, because obviously the the sin bin and the... um, 
cynical play was kind of stealing the headlines. And uh, but as we always say here, it's uh, it's 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 often the rule change or the little the, the little little tweak you haven't really thought about that actually causes the biggest problems. Do you think, Damien, that this is going to be complained about as much after this weekend by football folk as it was by hurling folk? Uh, yeah, it, 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 you're right, Mikey. We were at a media briefing with Donald Smith about maybe a, a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago now, and it was barely even mentioned. Um, you know, we were all on about black cards and sin bins for hurling and all that. And um, Of course, there's a, there's a hurling snobbery as well, and it would be part of it too that you feel it's the man's game, get on with it, but there's no cynicism whatsoever. But but there is, like, and, and it's it's probably become more prevalent in recent times. Um but I think it was always about letting the play flow. Um, and, you know, you had a five seconds to show you were going to do something about that. That was tweaked then this year, Mikey. And I think Donald did pr- predict that the referees would be blowing a lot more this time around. And that proved to be the case. And I, I was at the Tip Limerick game at the weekend uh, working. And I think Jason Ford, I don't know what he got. He nearly all freeze anyway. I think it was um, 11, was it? I think Jason got a... F- yeah, I think he got 14 points and 11 from a place ball. And um, I came out of there afterwards saying, you know, there were way too many frees in that game. And a very, very stop start. And I think there's a couple of things they have to look at in hurling anyway, but sometimes the change is too, is too, is too regular in the GEA. They've been accused over the years of not changing enough. But from my perspective in the last few years, they've nearly changed things too much. Um, so I think you'll see after, after round one of the Football League, you'll know immediately where you stand with the advantage rule. But I did text somebody who's kind of in the know about the rules over the weekend. And I was kind of saying, apart from the advantage rule, not too bad, really. Um, Cause I thought it would be a huge fuss in terms of um, cynicism inside the 20 meter arc. Um, but he, he did say, we've got a couple of things to work on. I would imagine they're playing the, the advantage rule is one of those Mikey. And just reading between the lines, they won't be, if they feel that's going to be a blight in the game, you know, if it's a trial rule, you know, I, I think management committee have the power technically to overrule that, but it's going to have to go all that way to get that change. So we'll know after round one, um, certainly stop start games, nobody wants them whatsoever. And it's more obvious in, in hurling. So maybe not as much in football in terms of the, the flow of play. Yeah. Kevin, how do you see it? How do you see it uh, well, I, manifesting uh, in football? Well, I watched the hurling last weekend. Just, I, I, uh, I was stunned by um, the amount of whistle blowing when lads yeah. looked like they were going to move on and execute. Um, uh, very interesting, Damien, that you would say that uh, last week the cynical foul rule, some of the ref's feedback was, well, that seemed to go very well. Well, wait, you're just inside the 20 meter line and you're over at the sideline and a fella pulls you down and there's a penalty. We'll see how well it goes then. <laughs> yeah. um, when you have when you have the, the Gaelic football managers uh, screaming for that, now that's that, that's an area I'm, I, I, I'm amazed that they've left in it, but they have, technically. So if I sell you a dummy on the sideline, Mikey, and I have a an immediate two-on-one, or I, I can develop an overlap, and you pull me down or hand trip me or whatever you do, it's a penalty and mm-hmm. and and off you trot on your black card. I noticed the hurlers don't like the color black. They, they've insisted on staying yellow, <laughs> um, even though we're supposed to be the same association. I don't know. Uh, neg- negative connotations. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah sure indeed, was, yeah. indeed. But but, but the, Kevin, that 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 twenty meter arc was always going to to rise. Kind well, not of not the arc. Um, it's the line, Damien. It's the inside the twenty meter line. So as opposed over to the on, yeah, over area. On, pardon me, Mikey. As opposed to straight in front of the goal area. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you see, it, it, it's, it's everything what, what inside we, the 20 plus the arc. <laughs> Jeez, that's a lot of, that's a lot of real estate. From, yeah, what we gained from that meeting last week, though, was that so much of this, Kevin, was going to be left down to the interpretation of the referee on the day. And was there going to be a clear well, goal? That's, true. that's a recipe. That's a recipe for inconsistency yeah. immediately. So we, no, absolutely. Yeah. So I, that's what I'm saying. You're going to need two or three weeks to get a consensus because... You know, the foul that you described, technically you're correct, but will that be deemed a clear goal-scoring opportunity by the referee at that side of the pitch? I don't know. But mm. again, look at the point remains. It's down to an individual on the day. No two individuals will have the same opinion on this. So it, it will it will lead to confusion. There's no doubt yeah, about it. It's a clunky 
uh, as best at, at its best, it's a clunky rule. Um, mm. As is the the amendment to the advantage. Yeah, that, that's I think what you asked me, yeah. Mikey. My opinion on that. The the advantage now is have your time and space, or is it a goal scoring opportunity? If you just take the Limerick one, which I think we're most of us will remember, the hurling one last weekend. Um, well, obviously it wasn't a goal scoring opportunity, so that's fair enough. But he had loads of time and space, as he showed us well, because didn't he puck it over the bar? Is, mm. is my memory. And, and then they called it back for a free that they actually missed. So kind of uh, go go figure that one now, that that's an advantage. You bring a fella back to take a free that he puts wide. Um, but I've always thought of the advantage. And again, it goes back to us as a, as a, as a kind of a, a tribal organization, that the advantage rule, um, as you see it when you're watching professional rugby, where the advantage is played through and through and through. Now, I'm not suggesting we'd play through for... 15 phases or anything like that. It's a different game, but it certainly is played through. You could you could certainly let Shane tear off down and goal and see does he put it in the back of the net. And if he puts it wide, just call him back to where the advantage uh, occurred mm. initially. That's a very simple advantage rule to um, execute for any referee. And the one they've come up with now just seems to be heaping it more difficulty on them. So I don't know why we would not go, but I remember Colin O'Rourke at the time kind of giving off that, well, geez, you know, you go through, the hand goes up, you kick it wide, and now you get another opportunity where he brings you back. Yeah, so it's not what advantage That's means. the advantage. That's what, that's what <laughs> advantage is. So that's, I think it's a, it's a matter of, you know, we hate to seem to ape any other game. We want all, we want a rule that's completely unique to ourselves. But in doing so, we tend to strangle ourselves uh, with the complexity of them. Uh, is it something you've um, been dealing with in training, Shane, or have been rushing to deal with in training now after seeing the reaction in the hurling? Yeah, it is, it is like, it's like what the two lads have said there. It is down to interpretation. So if we're playing, we played last week an in house game and we had a, a, a Wexford official in to referee it and we on the sideline myself Anthony um, and Philip are, are, are judging is that is it you know as, as coaches it's very difficult to kind of to, to kind of coach what is being required because we do know on the day it's going to be down to interpretation and we'd see down in division four that that will fluctuate a lot obviously from week to week you know and so that's that's the concern we, we can, can try and make the players aware of it, but then we really don't know ourselves either. Yeah. I heard yeah. a, I heard a, um, a story of, a, a, like that, Shane, an in-house referee, uh, and everything was going lovely. And everything was fine. And uh, and I think at halftime, he just said to one of the, he got, he got the manager and one of the players to deliberately um, do one of these fouls in the second half, just about a meter inside the D. So a long way from the goal, and a guy pulled a fella. And he obviously they had punched it. Well, there was consternation. You know, they, they, they got a, there was a penalty awarded, a black card, and the two teams in arms over it because it just was psyche that this would be the sanction. Jeez, all of a sudden it's a penalty and a, and, and a guy and a black card. And it was so far away. Like if you have twenty meters, and that arc is that arc is thirteen meters. Like you're thirty. Away from the, and all of a sudden it's team in our final and you have to make a, your interpretation we're well, good luck with that yeah yeah it's it, it is a little bit tricky and um shane are there any more challenges you've kind of you've met now in terms of just kind of the the short run in the lack of challenge games kind of catering you know that those questions it between the short run-in and the fact that we're still in a pandemic, things might be easing, but there's still a hell of a lot of restrictions on how we how we live our lives. And just curious, like, what's the setup in Ferns now? Are you using the dressing rooms, or have you set up marquees like the Kerry Hurlers did last year, or the Kilkenny Hurlers did? How are you how are you dealing with things like that on a practical basis, like a three or four nights a week? Yeah, like, yeah, we're blessed because uh, Ferns and in Ferns, the shame is up in Ferns. He, he we. Um, he has it absolutely. We have the run of the place, and as I said, the, ourselves and the hurlers go on opposite nights due to the, the size of our, our panel. So we have four dressing rooms, and we divide them into you know pods of eight or pods of nine, um, and we'd have 
all, everything spaced out, socially distant. But the, the, the one for me is player welfare. That is the key. That's like we went in a, a game near the end of training. You're worried about fatigue and you're watching, you're watching it nearly with your hand over your, your eyes thinking, can anyone you know, strain a hamstring? Can anyone do, you know, get a knock that will literally put them out of potentially Watford and Carlo? Like, and, and that's the thing, I have probably never spoke to my, uh, my s coach as much as I have now going, is this, is this RPE enough? Are we going to be ready? But are we going to be safe that, the, that we will have everyone available? So that is the, that, that's the key. And everything Shane, seems- would, would, Mikey, would you mind if I just threw in something at Shane there? God, uh, fire just and it, 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 it's, it works grand with your last question to me and, and the question to Shane. Um, one was about rules and the other one was you're, you're talking about load and, 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 and what they can take in training and showing signs of strain. I read during the week, I don't know, is it a rule change or a protocol? Again, maybe Damien, you might know, where they're going to allow seven substitutions, but yeah. you, you have five occasions only yeah. to get the seven yeah. out. Mm. Now, all of a sudden, that change changes your dynamic um, dramatically, Shane, in, in terms of options. If, if you have a panel that stretches, if you've seven or eight really good subs, like perhaps the top counties do, um, but in terms of rest, in terms of momentum, trying to change momentum, trying to inject fresh legs, uh, and of course, feeding back into what you were talking about, player welfare, and well, early on in the season, how fit are they? What loads can they take, etc.? So, it's like seven is nearly half a team. You yeah. know, uh, it's a yeah. lot of it's a lot of bodies. It's isn't it half the outfield, uh, lads? So, yeah. um, you, you're you're going to have to start thinking about that as well. Obviously, I imagine. Yeah, like uh, that's the key, and it, it really then done, it then comes back down to the challenge games and the kind of judging. Obviously, like anything, the, who comes on when, where. Uh, normally, you know, a lot of teams they get the fifty minutes to two, ten, and twelve come off and replacing them, and that's nearly a given for all counties. But now, obviously, with it week on week and uh, and kind of not overly sure where everyone is, it it really is kind of going to be kind of it's going to be have to be well judged. And good for good for panel morale as well is is one of the things I would remember from my days when you're limited to four well three back in the day but then it went up to four and five that uh, the more people you get involved in the league and can give a bit of game time and minutes to but then the, the game becomes um, very fractured and like, yes. um, yeah. so you have to be careful of that too throw in the water breaks as well and you're getting a lot yes of, uh, are, are they still in there they're, they're still in yeah uh, i saw a very interesting one i won't mention the player uh, you're right kevin it does give another half of the team a, a chance However, you only have five occasions to bring the subs on. And I saw a chap warming up in front of me last weekend and he kept giving the management daggers because he was warming <laughs> for about 20 minutes. But he didn't realise it. I, I copped it. The tip it on. Oh, I give away the county. The Pete Finner, the Pete Finner, the Pete Finner <laughs> warm up. Yeah, tip had already uh, used the five intervals to bring the sub on, um. So he was warming up, but couldn't have been brought oh, on. Oh yes, 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 yes. And he kept looking over at the management, saying. Why won't you? Why won't you use me? You know, the the Muir Ferner one was was one I copped as well. Um, he's gone, you, isn't he? Yeah, he's gone. And there was occasions last week when both teams were trying to suss each other out after the first water break. Like in terms of tip, do you press up in Limerick or do you sit back? And they got caught a couple of times. And that's, and that's the word That's uh, massive now for you, Shane, as well. You've no Muir Ferner. Yeah. You know I mean, that's now get the messages out. Mm. Jeez, yeah, no, tricky. That, yeah, no, that is that is one, and you're talking about momentum of a game and trying to get a message out that you know we need to a win the breaking ball we need to do a, a different kick out we need to change it up it's you know it's it's going to be that's the that's the one that probably would have um well i'd, I'd find the most like philip wallace uh, was my mayor for last year and he's you know a, a very good influence and to be able to well what do you think go out and he'd have a a, a, good, a good way with the players as well so to go out and get the very best of them um in a break and play and we struggled mm-hmm. with that uh Phil, we used to just send Phil out whenever, whenever there was an opportunity. So maybe that's the reason why it's been stopped. Did he yeah. win any kickouts when he was out there? <laughs> uh, that might have, <laughs> that might have been the problem. If you saw him going onto the field, uh, there was no ball going to be kicked near him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> blocking off space, blocking yeah. off space. But look, I think this in this short conversation, I think we've um, we we we've pointed out that it's going to be an interesting league for a lot of reasons. The the results may not be the most important for some counties for others it'll be very important but the fact that we're dealing with a lot of change 
We're dealing with salads on buses. We're dealing with no more fairness. It's it's going to be different. It's going to be very interesting. And we wish you the best of luck, Shane. And thank you. Best of luck, Shane. Yeah, have a good season. Yeah, best of luck. Yeah. Thanks best luck, Shane. And thank you to, to Damien and to Kevin. And now I'm Pleasure. going to catch up with uh, Kilkenny Camogie star Katie Power uh, at the uh, head of the start of the Camogie League on what has been a very eventful pre-season for um, the Camogie Intercounty players. He hits it, he hits it, it's over the bar! Oh, holy Moses! Okay, Katie, how are you doing? Thanks very much for, for chatting to us, obviously, on the occasion of the launch of the Littlewoods uh, National League. Um, first and for, most importantly, are, are, you, are you fit and firing and ready to go for the weekend? Uh, personally, no. Uh, be another few weeks off yet, but look, getting there slowly. Obviously, it's a slow injury uh, hmm. with a bone. Obviously, it's not going to be fairly quick, but look, I'm getting there and happy with progress today. So, you know, like I'll be looking forward to the summer anyway. So, hopefully, I'll, I'll get back on the field with the girls. Yeah, you don't, you, you mightn't see action during the league at all then, no? Uh, depend, like it, it depends on how far it can you get as well. Um, mm-hmm. So, there's only two league, league or group games, let's yeah. say. So, obviously, they'll come way too quick. And the semi-final is penciled in, I think, for around the start or the middle of June. Mm-hmm. So that get, that's another month from now. So look, another four to six weeks should bring me a long way. But again, like you, you'd be dependent on the small bit of luck and for things to stay progressing the way they are, obviously with serious injuries. You know yourself now, they can come weeks that, you know, you might need to take a step back. But I've given myself no date or the physio or the management haven't given me a date because... I don't want to have to reach that date and not be right either. I want to be as right as I can, please, God, come championship. So Absolutely, because obviously, you know, last year was very strange for everybody, but, you know, the championship did get played off at the at the back end of the year and Kilkenny did win the All-Ireland, but you <laughs> obviously were, were sidelined. How tough was that? Uh, yeah, look, it was extremely tough and I'm not going to ever say... It wasn't, you know, I'm not going to lie about that. It was mixed emotions because, you know, you're still so heavily involved in the group. And I suppose the group had been through the ringer the couple of years previous. So it was great for the actual group itself to get over the line. But, you know, it's not in beats being out there with them. And as happy and as proud as I was for, for the girls, you know, obviously I wanted to be out there playing. It was extremely tough few weeks, few months now, I have to say, but... Look, as I said to the lads earlier on, you know, that that tough period is behind me now. So, you know, it, the evenings are brighter, you know, I'm back doing a bit of running. Like, so, you know, things are improving slightly. And, you know, even, you know, when things are really tough back then, I always just try to keep myself going to say, look, things can never get, get that bad again. They, I can't have a worse year than I did last year. So um, for Kilkenny Camogie, it was a fantastic fantastic year for Katie Power it probably wasn't as good no no that's fair to say I think you're right I think we're all looking at no year can be as bad as 2020 I think <laughs> that, 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 I think that's everybody's hope at least uh, <laughs> going, yeah, sure. going forward um to, to matters of the last of the last week or so um the cynic in me might say that there was there was a small number of club uh, a small fraction of a majority voted in favor of the um the, the split season and that's that's what we now have after the Camogie Association voting to to play league club and then championship yeah as I said the cynic of me would say that um there's not a chance too many Kilkenny clubs would have voted in favor of it because dual players aren't really uh, 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 I don't really exist down your neck yeah. of the woods so would it be fair to say that you and most Kilkenny players and clubs would have been happy uh, would have been happy enough with the with the, the the original plan from the Camogie Association. Um, look, to be honest, we didn't really mind either way. We just wanted to be back playing. Um, in the fact that yeah, like it did come up in our conversations that it was obviously different for Kilkenny because we didn't have that dual player aspect. But you know, it wasn't just about Kilkenny. Like it was about the whole Camogie as a whole. So you know we were just happy we're happy to get back and you know at the start of the national league we just wanted everything to be positive and thankfully now today is wednesday you know things are completely cleared up the the games are going ahead the weekend and you know it's great for camogie the fact that you know the funding and the ladies football the funding has come in this week Mm -hmm. as well you know that we're finally you know 
said to be as, as equals as the lads in terms of the funding like so you know it was obviously difficult and frustrating for everyone but you know thankfully it's been all cleared up and I think everyone's looking forward to the weekend now yeah yourself how would you have voted um look I, I to be honest I didn't think about it because I wasn't playing either mm. personally like I wasn't going to be playing the weekend and it wasn't I, I don't know I'd be straight I hadn't even thought about it. I wasn't going to be playing um and as I said, look, we're all just happy to be to be playing and to be looking forward to the games we can now. So thankfully, thankfully it all's here though. Yeah, as you say, you're not playing, so it doesn't impact you uh specifically. But I guess it's not ideal planning, is it, to not to not know coming into what is supposed to be the first round of league matches, you know, going into that week, not actually knowing if those games are going yeah. ahead, everything up in the air. It's 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 difficult enough for, for managers and coaches and for players to to prep for games. Yeah, definitely. Like the girls were playing a training match there on Saturday and like they didn't know, you know, whether to try set up like they were going to be setting up the weekend. And now, in fairness, we were preparing as if we were going to be playing a match. So, but, you know, you, you do know by people like it is in the back of their heads, like, geez, we might even have a game next weekend. But, you know, then we trained last night and the news had broke before training. So, you know, there was an extra buzz in training where all the girls are they're mad to go and I'm sure every other county team is the, is the same like it's been a while now since they've been a competitive game like for everybody so you know everyone's kind of jumping at the bit now yeah um what what is the structure for the Kilkenny clubs will there be league matches going on now during the inter-county season or will there be no club activity until after the inter-county and will it just be the championship how will it work uh, so as far as I'm aware at the moment, there'll be there'll be leagues like all county leagues for mm. obviously the players that aren't involved with the county teams. And then the minute the county team is knocked out, whether it's July, August, September, that, that's when our championship will start. So we're not going to wait until every county team is knocked out of the championship because obviously we want to look after the club players as well, to be fair to them. You know, so look, you know, it has its ups and it has its downs, but I think the great thing is now there's actually a definite plan in place. So everybody, club managers and county managers can can plan now and have, you know, no distractions from here on in. Yeah. And um, as you say, there, there, there will be matches for club players. So it's not as if, yeah, you know, exactly. they'll be kicking their heels until, uh, you know, September or October or whatever it is. Yeah. They, they will have matches to play. Yeah, there is league games, yeah, which will be, it'll be something. I know it's not the same, but it, it is definitely something for them to be to be working towards. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the funding, which obviously was 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 a great news story, just kind of dropped out of nowhere by by, by uh, Minister, Junior Minister for Sport, Jack Chambers there on, on radio uh, earlier in the week that, um, grants for intercounty uh, ladies footballers and, and Kabogi players will go from 400 to, to 1200 to, to parity with, with their male counterparts that um, must have been a pleasant surprise early yeah. in the week yeah it was so it, um, our WGPA reps put it into their group and it kind of took me a few minutes to register it's like Jesus that's unbelievable like and you know I have to say like the last few years there has been a huge progression towards women in sport and you know I think it is justified like not just in Gaelic games but like you've seen Rachel Blackmore with the horse racing like she she doesn't call herself a woman jockey she calls herself a jockey and mm. like Katie Taylor she goes out every match you know she's unbeaten like and obviously they're professionals and it, it does filter down like as camogie players you know we'd be good friends with a lot of Kenny hurlers and they see how much we train you know it's as it's the same amount as them and you know they, they'd be in shock like that we don't get the same as, as them either so it was fantastic it was really really good and you know obviously there was you know the bit of bad press at the start of the week but I definitely think this good press is out on this so you know like it, it's it's really good yeah yeah um and of course it doesn't it doesn't this is a personal grant which I, I, is the plan that they'll be pooled um, to kind of help cover ex uh, other expenses such as because obviously like other things like travel and nutrition and uh, etc they're not they're not yet on parity with the GA isn't that right did I say am I confused by saying that there was a plan to kind of maybe on a county by county basis that these grants will now actually be pooled so that and then they'll be kind of they'll be used for kind of more general expenses as well yeah. as for personal expenses yeah that's that's true like so like there is grants I think available for like strength and conditioning and uh, physiotherapy, nutrition, 
um, then there'll be medical expenses and then hopefully like the ladies book will have come in have come in with the travel expenses as well so yeah it's it's merging like that um so basically every player will be looked after the same yeah that's great and uh, not not given the gpa uh, all the credit for this by any means because i know the wheels were in motion for a while but um how do you feel about the the, the the merger of the wgpa and the gpa and do you think it's already paying dividends yeah for sure like even this week alone i had paid dividends um and you know, it's only a positive thing for camogie to be merged in with the the lads as well and you know we can see the the pros to it now and you know hopefully that'll keep the ball moving you know as i said like a lot of the lads themselves can see how much time and effort that female or female counterparts put in so you know they're as helpful towards us as as anyone like so it, yeah it's it's definitely a plus to be involved with the gpa yeah yeah it, it does obviously any merger it, it brings up the the question of the larger merger of camogie yeah. lgfa and ga which the ga isn't a perfect organization there's lots of things that go wrong there but like you know, these issues you know squabbles about you know calendars and championship structures and such and you know dual players again not a kilkenny issue but uh, an issue for a lot of your your, your um your closest competitors they would kind of go away do, do you have much of a view on that and whether the three organizations together would be would be better fit for the players themselves yeah look i think any camogie player any ladies footballer would would tell you that they would love to see all of it merge under the gaa because i think it would benefit everything you know from grassroots females to inter-county like so yeah, it's definitely something that we would love to see whether it'll happen. We don't know whether it might happen in years to come. Um, it's it's hard. To, it's a hard one to call, really, isn't it? Like, but I, I definitely, I would be a fan of it to be honest. Like, but again, it's something that none of us can control either. Like, it's it's out of our control, no matter how much we say we would or we wouldn't. So, you know, it's it's really not anything for us to be focused on focusing on as well and it's not a vocal point with us but yeah like it it would make sense in my eyes anyway yeah and and then just finally um I, I'm guessing you're at training sessions even if you're not quite taking a full part in them how has the how has the you know the four-week run in how is that manifesting itself are, uh, are you having many soft tissue injuries are training sessions been very easy going have you had any challenge matches it's kind of a strange run into the league isn't yeah it? I know it's only been a month, but in one way I feel like it's been ages, and in another way I feel like it's been really short. But um, yeah, like obviously the first week the lads were very sensible. You know the girls have been working really hard since January, as everyone else has. But you know they didn't want to come in and flake girls, and you know they've been injured then for a week or two, and then it's the lead up to the first match. So yeah, look, it's been in a controlled manner. Um, the girls came in with a very good base fitness. So basically, you know, just working on a lot of hurling now. As I said, you know, they haven't played now since they, they played in December. Some teams haven't played since November. So it's a, it's a long break without a hurl in the hand and trying to get sharp again. So to be honest, it, it's like 90% of the training is, is hurling and, you know, just trying to get girls back in, you know, the bodies right. And, you know, they, they, I don't think we've played a full 60 minutes yet. So the weekend is going to be the first full 60. So I'd say there'd be a few broke up bodies on Sunday. <laughs> the last five, ten minutes could be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> cramped. All right, Katie, look, it's a pleasure catching up with you. Thanks very much for taking the time Thanks to speak for having to us. Me. He hits it, he hits it, it's over the bar. Oh, holy Moses. Okay, it was great to catch up with Katie Power there um, on the road to rehab and getting some very interesting views on the fixture. Uh, situation in Camogie and funding and the possibility that thorny issue of a merger um, so that's it for this week thank you very much for joining us um, and thank you to, to Kevin and Shane for Damien for earlier um, don't forget all the other RTE podcasts sports podcasts are out there the rugby podcast uh, recorded on Wednesday uh, the soccer podcast was is out since Monday and uh, the latest episode of We Become Heroes with Marie Crow is Marie going through the career of her uh, game on uh, co-host Ruby Walsh which is a very interesting listen Ruby not going easy on himself even in retirement uh, we have a double weekend of Allianz League this weekend so there's plenty of action on RTE television and on Saturday and Sunday Sport on RTE Radio 1 and we will have live blogs of the most of the action on Saturday and Sunday on the RTE Sport website and the RTE News app so um, we'll keep you informed 
whatever platform you want to join us on. Okay, that's it. We will see you again next week. And this thanks very much. Crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road. And that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the bar. Oh, holy Moses.